This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Eddie was the best I ever seen play the game. The whole town knew him. Since baseball has been taken from his life, he has been completely lost. Cheers. He has a gambling problem. I have a feeling I'm in bad shape. He's stolen from my sister. He stole my parents' credit card. To live out of a gym bag at 32 years old. What do you got? He's the epitome of a scumbag. My dad, to this day, will throw a baseball in his face. It's not right, Ed. This is an ambush. My dad can't get over it. We got to relive all the things that I have done to f up. Are you ever going to forgive me? That was like a knife. We were a team. To you, I pose one question. Will you accept treatment and get help today? Uh, I need a minute. I need, I, need, I need a minute. Yeah, give him, give him a minute. Oh, man. Nice. My name is Brian, and I'm Eddie's younger brother. So like, this is the beginnings of baseball stuff. My brother focused everything into becoming the best baseball player that he could. This was uh, when he went to the, he played on the Babe Ruth World Series team. Very uh, proud parents there with my brother at a Duke game. This is when he won his first team, all ACC conference and all America award. He didn't make it to the major leagues, but very easily could have. This is a, this is his life or what's left of it. Or the old life, what was left of his good life. Somebody were asked me if I'm an alcoholic. I would I would probably answer no. I don't feel the need to drink. You know, I enjoy a, a cold beer. Initially I feel great. There's almost a sense of release. It does have a calming, soothing, almost relaxing feeling and sensation to it. And I thoroughly enjoy that feeling. There's been no question in my mind that he's an alcoholic. He has been in denial about it a long time. Cheers. It is socially acceptable. I like to do it. It's not illegal. I don't feel like I'm necessarily doing anything wrong. When you do it to, you know, get so obliterated and incoherent that you can't form a sentence, like, that's not acceptable. And when Eddie drinks, he drinks to, to get wasted. <laughs> you loser! No. <laughs> the rate he drinks is literally, like, Wow, buddy, I can't believe you can still talk right now. You know, you can move. The very tall gentleman over there, I actually bet him $100 that I could drink a pint of beer faster than him. I believe he has a gambling problem. The sports bets. I believe he goes to the casino. Whether you're bluffing or you have a big hand, you know, it's, it's the best. What do you got? Ed's cleaning house a little bit. Hey, hey, I have a feeling I'm in bad shape. Wow. He's stolen from my sister. He stole my parents' credit card. <laughs> Him and a good friend of his got themselves involved in a high roller game. And we have the Western Union money to him for bailing him out of being stupid while he's drunk. Drinking alcohol has certainly complicated my life. I 
shot of Black House, and I need a lager. I think about having to say I'm sorry to somebody's family that he kills someday. I find that horrible. Whether it be a traffic fatality or something ugly, I know that if something ain't done, I'm going to bury it. He's on such a road to destruction, but he is a lost, lost soul. I don't think I'll ever understand, you know, why he came to this. I don't think I will. The day Eddie was born, probably in one of the happiest times of my life. From the time he could, he was crawling. If there was a ball, he was crawling after it. When he was two, he went to the Phillies World Series and knew exactly what was going on, could tell you every player's name, and, you know, it was a big deal to him. He loved it. He's about nine years old, got hooked, loved catching, and loved putting the bat on the ball. My dad, a big part of that, you know, helping me develop uh, my skill sets at, a, at an early age. I used to uh, go out in the backyard, show him how to block balls, show him how, you know, the quicker to release down the second makes you look 100 times faster than what you really are. His father, he would just encourage, encourage, encourage. That's what I'm talking about now. That's, that's what I wanted you to do. That's perfect. And I always used to say to them, I'm not going to practice it till you die. But I guarantee you, if you give me 60 minutes of your undivided attention, I will guarantee you from my heart good results. I was one of the best Little League baseball players in the area. Started to set records, Little League records, hitting the most home runs in a season. My earliest memory of Eddie was definitely baseball and being the hero to anyone and everyone that knew him. You could pick the newspaper up and at least once, twice, three times a week see his name in there. I mean, the whole town knew him. You feel like the coolest kid in the world. People thought that family was the all, you know, American perfect family. Not only were all three of us tremendous athletes, we were fantastic students. Everybody saw us as the Brady Bunch, and we were the farthest thing from it. I always demanded excellence, and I always demanded 100% effort. It's kind of like a duty to be the best. That stress and pressure really started to, uh, I guess, take a toll on me, you know, even at an early age. They never really did accept failure. Fear of not not performing well and having to hear horrible things from them. That I stink, that I, you know, that I suck, that I'm not good enough. Yell, scream, hope you intimidate them enough to perform a little better. It, it hurt. Everything that he said to me cut right to my core, right to the bone. And I wanted to do well a lot of times because I didn't want to feel that. I didn't want to feel those emotions. Was there were times it was pretty harsh? I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I was. He's the only guy in, in my whole life that I've ever been terrified of when he gets angry. I would just say, you know what? Hard work will pay off. It was his turn to go up for bat. And we were all holding hands like, <laughs> And uh, he hit that ball, and it cleared that fence. And all the coaches turned and looked. And they went, son, what are your grades like? And we were like, oh, we were so excited. It was awesome. I was really happy because I thought the sky was the limit for baseball and, and my academic future. He went to Duke, and he didn't let us down started immediately as a freshman and had a tremendous batting average, was hitting home runs, and started breaking collegiate records as a freshman. He made first team All-ACC, made first team All-American. 
was projected to go for a second round in the Major League Draft at the end of his junior year. We all wanted to say, you know, that guy who hit that 500-foot home run, that's my brother. We drove to Georgia, to South Carolina, Maryland, Virginia, Virginia Tech. We drove everywhere to watch him play baseball. And I always used to say to him, Eddie, you are the best damn left-handed hitter I ever seen play the game. There's so much pressure in constantly holding up the image of being the perfect kid. You know, the all-American, you know, baseball superstar that I wanted to go out and drink and hang out with my friends. Being out on my own and with, you know, not, no mom and dad up my butt telling me what to do anymore. It seemed like a uh, fantasy land. You know, I felt great, felt happy. I found out I'm a pretty fun guy, you know, when I drink. I mean, he was smoking pot constantly, you know, before games, after games, you know, coupled with the excessive drinking. I think deep down he felt that, okay, yeah, the coach is going to threaten me, but there's no way, there's no way whatsoever that this coach is going to get rid of me. the hardest, uh, probably hardest thing that I've had to experience to that point in my life. It was about 2 a.m. when we got the phone call, I'll never forget. All I can hear Ed say is, are you effing kidding me? My husband, his heart was broken, broken. And he hung up the phone and my husband cried. After that, there, there weren't any more trips to Duke um, at all. And my parents stopped really relating to me. They didn't call me as much my senior year, and they didn't come down to see me one time all school year, not once. He feels that his parents abandoned him because he lost something that was his life and that he loved, but he also lost something that in turn was their life and that they loved. It's a part of me to quit. I ain't never been a quitter. Yeah. You know, I started drinking more than I should have because I was upset. But I never affected my ability to be successful. We enjoyed spending, you know, a lot of time at the restaurant together, and we were successful at it. As far as the restaurant was concerned, they served great food. They had great service. We got reviewed by critics, all letting us know that we were doing an amazing job. We all thought, OK, the craziness, all that, we thought it was over, that he was finally found his niche. He had it. Thank God. He finally has something he can feel proud of again. He found a way to live life without baseball, we thought. And it was all fake. I was there twice, and both times, Eddie was very drunk the entire time we were there. Things got tough. I started experimenting with cocaine, start smoking pot, and start drinking more. Everything started to fall apart again, all over again. Declare personal bankruptcy, lost the house, lost the business. Then the marriage spiraled out of control from there, and then she had him arrested for harassment and breaking and entering and everything in the restraining order. live out of a gym bag at 32 years old. Not right. Since baseball has been taken from his life, he has been just wandering down a path of destruction, completely lost. How many times has he had DUIs? I think both luck and statistics are against him at this point as to whether or not he'll get another one before killing somebody. 
or killing himself. Uh, yes, I was calling in reference to the uh, the uh, travel tryouts this Thursday. Baseball, it's been in my life, you know, forever. It's probably the last thing that I can remember doing for myself where I truly was happy. I know Jeff uh, from back in the day. But, um, yeah, if he was looking for players for an over-30 over 30 league, I'm definitely interested. Or if he's looking... Daddy lives in the past. I mean, he will tell you... Any day of the week, morning, noon, or night, that he can, he'll still hit a baseball 550 feet. And I've told him time and time again, who, who the hell cares? He's 32, he's got no job, no car, no career. After I have a few drinks, I can enjoy myself and have fun. His inability to see that the happiness that he's experienced when he's drinking and out of the bars is so temporary. He can't find happiness in the future unless he puts the past to rest and he quits drinking. Three strikes are out at the old ball game. It is a He was loving, he was caring, he was just a good person. You know, I can't say the same thing now because, you know, at this point, he's very good at manipulating and telling lies and being very, very deceptive. I love my brother, but I don't know who he is anymore. <sighs> he's both using his newfound friend, Jackie, for food and lodging. And I also believe he's using an ex-girlfriend as a means of companionship. Who knows, maybe sex, whatever, I don't know. He is a diabolical liar. Like Thursday and Friday, I'm supposed to be getting together later in the week with some friends and stuff, so we'll see how that all plays out. You seemingly don't want me there. What's that? No, no, Thursday, yes. Friday, I'm probably just going to um, catch up with some of the guys. Guys. So. Sure. Taking advantage of people like that, I think it's the epitome of a scumbag. I definitely have uh, some resentment towards my sister. She went and uh, told some pretty horrible things about me. Said, come here, I wanna, I wanna talk to you. And he grabbed me like a crazy man. It was horrifying. I was afraid I'd never get out of that bathroom. That was the moment that I realized I have no idea what he's capable of anymore. Uh-oh. What? My parents are here. That's not your parents, is it? Yes, it is. Since the day that Eddie got cut from the baseball team, my dad and him have had a relationship that, when you compare it to the relationship they had prior to that, you, you wouldn't believe it's the same two people. Hi, Jack. Good. Good. What he's doing and 
the track he's taken in his life right now has no real good outcome. What's going on tomorrow? Jobs are good for the most part. My dad feels embarrassed that his pride and joy didn't, didn't succeed. Am I guilty of expecting too much of him? I can take it to my grave and tell you no. I never expected anything other than what he was naturally born with. My dad, I know that he played baseball growing up. I know that he was pretty good himself. I'm not gonna lie, I, I, was, I was a very good baseball player in high school. My dad always instilled in me, and even the night he died, he said to me, take good care of your mother and never bring shame to your name. He stayed back because of um, my aunt, his mother, not having anybody at home. But I think he often wonders what would have happened if he did do it. And that's why there was a sense of uh, vicariously living through Eddie. We were a team. When Eddie lost baseball, it should be Eddie that's devastated. Not my dad. And my dad can't get over it. Answer me this. Why would you go back to the same demons that got you in trouble? Answer me that. Answer me that. Just answer me why you go back to the bars. Because it has no, because it, it's. It, it's not right, Ed. You're, you're not a Drinking's not illegal. No, I, no, I don't care about drinking legal. Drinking and driving is. Drinking habitually and drinking to get yourself in trouble. I never intend to get in trouble. No one ever intends to get behind a wheel drunk and get caught. How many, how many cars you wrecked? God forbid you ever hurt somebody. And this is an ambush. I mean, this is ridiculous. I finally did good things. I can't even get credit for it. But no, we gotta, we gotta relive all the things that I have done to f up. Are you ever gonna forgive me? Ever. Look, they were this just asking bull questions. I can't believe, and I'm a little upset that you didn't let me know that they were gonna be here. I didn't think that there would be a problem with them being here. Well, there is a problem, big problem. He, he just doesn't get it. It's an interrogation. Eddie has robbed all the attention. Sorry, because it's touched a nerve. Like, Eddie has robbed all the attention my entire life. As a child, it was all extremely good, positive attention. And now it's just all negative, horrible attention. It's heartbreaking to watch it. It's heartbreaking to live with it and to see what he's doing to himself. My wedding, the happiest time of my life, was overshadowed because of Eddie, his drinking at the wedding, his behavior at the wedding, and my mom made it so that she couldn't have a good time because she was so worried about what was going on with Eddie that day. He's torn us apart. How many arguments have we had with me trying to rationalize what he's doing and you being, Denise, it's wrong. Me trying to give him that little bit more of a chance. We announced to the family we're having a child and it was like, hey, great, congratulations. Uh, back, back about Eddie. Brian needs to tell his parents. He doesn't need to be consumed with, with all of this, this drama that is, is going on when it's, it's not his responsibility. Maybe if I ever had the courage to say enough is enough, enough about Eddie already. We don't want to hear anything more about Eddie.
if you guys were in a pitch black room here doing a bunch of nasty stuff, and then I come in and turn the light on, <gasps> there you are. The light is not the problem. <laughs> mm. But what you're going to do is you're going to try to make me feel like the light's the problem or I'm the problem, and if I buy that, I'll turn the light off, and then you can go back to doing what you're doing. The problem is always the problem. Absolutely. All right. He's the dependent. He's a drug of choice. I'll call, I'll call you codependent because you start becoming dependent on the dependent for your high. You could become as preoccupied with Eddie as Eddie is with drinking. There's probably not a conversation that does not exist between our parents that Eddie isn't brought up. And that's not just day to day. That's every time we speak to our parents. Oh, God. My suggestion is that when he goes to treatment, mm -hmm. you, you go to the Betty Ford family program because you need some help, and that's what family treatment's about. Everybody's in charge of their own recovery, and they need to be whether the other person recovers or not. I want to because I don't want to feel like this anymore, and it's yeah. not fair to Brian and Lisa, and they want their mom and dad back too. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah. you're going? I'm going. You going? Okay. All right. So here's a new rule. We're not here to find him guilty or a trial. We're not here to make him feel bad. If feeling bad solved anything, this would be solved, because he feels bad. So we're going to try something else. And then tomorrow, Dad, I want you to tell him why you personally are here Now, tomorrow, the moment he walks in the door and sees everybody, he might dig his heels in and fight. Mm -hmm. He gets to say no, but he doesn't get to say no without life changing. He doesn't get to do this anymore. If he wants to do this, he gets to go someplace else and do it, not to us. So once again, if you ask me, you know, what's this about, what, what's going on, just explain you know, that. We've, you know, we've been, we've been concerned, concerned. For a long time, and we've all tried to help you, and... Didn't do any good. Didn't do any good. So we brought Mr. Van Vonderen to help. Okay. You guys still going to Betty Ford? Well, not right away. I, I'm just concerned about mom starting a new job, okay? Let me ask you a question. What happens if your folks cave? I have bottom lines for them. What's that? I can no longer do this to myself and my family. And if this continues, I'm going to have to cut ties. Mm-hmm. Because I can't do this anymore. We'll be there. OK. You have my word. OK. Sooner than later, my suggestion. Kind of want you to sit down and listen to what you have to say. Okay. I didn't expect to see you. What's going on? We're gonna sit over here. Sit next to mommy. Next to mom. Right in the middle. And I'm gonna sit next to you. Okay. I'm Jeff. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, um, 
So I've actually been here since yesterday. Okay. And I see a bunch of people that love you like crazy, but they feel like they're losing you. And they want to fight to get you back. So today is inviting you to join the fight. And they're going to say what they have to say, and you're going to say what you have to say, and then we're done. Okay. All right? <clears throat> Eddie, I spent a huge part of my life idolizing everything about you. Always dreaming that someday I would have the opportunity to be like my big brother. I can remember what an honor it was for me to brag to my friends about what a fantastic big brother I have. The family trips to watch you play baseball when your Babe Ruth baseball team went to the World Series, as well as the trips to just about every state up and down the East Coast while you were in college. At times, you can be so loving, genuine, and passionate. However, things have changed. Your DUIs display to me that you hold little value for your life, as well as the lives of others. Each time I read about you in the police log, I try to conceal my sadness with recalling the positive headlines from your baseball days. Eddie, I urge you to accept this gift today, and to you I pose one question. Will you accept treatment and get help today? I want you to hear from somebody who has pretty much disappeared from your life. Will you listen to your sister? Yeah. Eddie, I'm here because I love you and I refuse to witness the continual destruction of your life and soul due to your addiction. Eddie, growing up, I remember how incredible it was to simply be in your presence. We never had to be anywhere specific or do anything grand because as simple as you teaching me how to shoot a basketball in the driveway or teaching me how to play Nintendo were my favorite memories early on because all I wanted was to be around my big brother. Things are different now, Eddie. I've gone from always wanting to be in your presence to being fearful of being alone in a room with you. <laughs> it seems you lack any recognition as to how your actions impact your family and even yourself. I often wonder if there is a bottom for you other than killing yourself. Will you please? Accept the help that's being offered to you today. <sighs> Do I know the plan? Uh, you need a minute. Come here. Come here. I, I need. I need a minute. Yeah, give him. Give him a minute. Give him a minute. Just a lot to listen to. Yeah. Gonna... I, don't, I don't know I can leave the state. We'll talk about that. I have a court date I can't miss. Yeah, no, we fixed that. We uh, made arrangements with... Uh, the district attorney, and what's going on for your court date could be null and void if you said yes today. You all right? Yeah. Listen to me. Can I tell you one thing? OK. Mike, I once told you that water that goes over the dam in Silver Lake is gone. OK? <laughs> Never comes back. All right. You hear me? Yeah. This time, it's not the love of the game, mate. It's because I love you. I love you with all my heart. I want you back. 
please. I'm asking you to accept this help today. Start it out. Yeah, let's go. All right. Come here. Thanks for flying up. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Lisa. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Next time I see you, no worries. Okay, thank you. Thank you for doing this for me, Brian. You're welcome. Save my life. Save my life. You wake up. I'm fine. Remember that. Remember that. Okay. Remember that. I don't want to be the crap. All right. Now go get him. Hang on. Okay. He's off to a new future. doesn't know who he is. He's had a lot of experiences that have defined him, such as being a baseball player. With Eddie, we're going to be working on making him feel like he is important for real, as opposed to being important because of the things that he portrays. Please come on in, have a seat. Maybe I should look back and say, I presented a lot of grief the last few years in his life. Constant reminders of what you should have done or what you should be just want him to do what he loves to do. Because I would be proud of him no matter what he does. And I want to express that to him soon. I am extremely excited and Extremely nervous at the same time. Uh, my palms are sweating and everything. Just, I, I can't imagine what I'm going to see. Hey. Hey. Oh my God, you're incredible. What's going on? You're awesome. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. I've been sober for 55 days and I feel fantastic. It's good. Physically, I feel uh, very healthy. Emotionally, I feel like I have a, uh, a much more clear way of looking at things. He just looks healthy, and his eyes are open, and he looks like a completely different person. Hi. Hi. Hey, so I'm Craig Gibbons. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Ed, you. Why don't you have a seat? And Sounds good. Part of Ed's recovery is recognizing that he is more than the sum of his accomplishments, realizing just because your baseball career has ended as you knew it doesn't mean that your life is over. I wanted to know what was the hardest thing that you've realized since you've been here. I never, I never knew how to lose. And the last five years, I've done nothing but lose. A wife, house, business, cars. But most of all, my relationship with you, it's the hardest thing, is to, is to know that by not, by not understanding how to lose or just accept it or accepting failure, I, I end up losing more. I've learned how to appreciate life and how to be grateful for the things I still do have, a loving family. I just want him to be happy with who he is and um, build a relationship that's just one-on-one, -on -one, brother and sister, and go from there. When 
I found out my parents went, I was shocked. And it meant a lot to me. And the conversations I've had with my dad since then have been great. You know, he actually asked me about my day instead of interrogating me. It's kind of nice. And it made me feel good about myself that I, by choosing to come down here and do this, it's affected my whole entire family in a real positive way. Hey, Eddie. So good to see you. Well, I'm excited to be here. You look like a different human being. Funny thing is, I actually feel like a different human being. You looked pretty overwhelmed when you walked in the room that first day. Yeah, it was a lot to take in, but I figured I'd try something new. Well, tell me, what are you doing for work these days? I've worked as a project manager, but I also work as uh, the assistant baseball coach at Community College. It's one of the things I get to look forward to now. I get to be a coach. When you were playing, it was pretty obvious that your dad was your biggest fan. So tell me about your relationship with him right now. How's that? He's supportive of me coaching. He absolutely loves the fact that I'm happy. I have a great relationship with each and every person in my family. There's, there's still struggles, but they're much more manageable. It was great to talk to you. I'm so happy to hear how your life is going. I'm honored to have been a part of it. I can't thank everyone enough. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Sure, good to see you. It's good to see you, Jeff. Bye.